And next up, we're going to stay in Berlin. Berlin, duking out with Canada, uh, with Robert Nice and the Open Harbor Observatory. Yes, hello. Uh, hi, Nadia. Um, can you hear me well? Um, so, uh, let me um, just say that uh, I have been working for um, the Open Hardware Observatory um, in my free time. Uh, we all have been, and it's a non profit association from Berlin. And it was founded in 2021 as a spin off of the yeah, Technische Universität Berlin, so my employer, and the Open Next project, which uh, yeah, I've been working uh, uh, on as a project manager for the last two years. So um, the, the main goal actually of OVO uh, is to support, improve, and make more sustainable open hardware projects through our web platform. And uh, yeah, you can, of course, visit us. Um, I would uh, like to encourage to do so. Um, and, uh, but uh, we have some sub goals, which I also would like to mention. So we promote publicly available do it yourself and open hardware projects, um, even since a couple of years now, um, uh, also before we were founded as an association formally, uh, we certify and improve selected, uh, selected projects by, uh, by skilled and experienced experts, and we create blueprints for selected projects and publish them under free licenses. All of this is in a bit of a prototype state, and uh, just to say, so I'm an industrial engineer, I, I, I study in our groups uh, engineering design, and um, yeah, so uh, actually, we, we, our idea is that uh, of, of open hardware is, is really um, um, that there needs to be uh, more interaction and there needs to be more sharing and, and there needs to be sharing of documentation, especially for mechanical hardware, this is key and this is very tricky. So um, that motivated us from years ago. Um, we've been thinking um, a lot of people have been trying to develop a GitHub for open hardware and uh, that's a great mission um, and uh, fully support that. Um, but yeah, so our vision was a bit different. We, we said we would rather create a Wikipedia for hardware um, in, in our frame. Um, and, and that's because um, the motivation is really for Wikipedia to make a very available free and encyclopedic knowledge to everyone. And this is open content. And uh, they have created more than 50 million articles uh, created yeah, um, uh, within the community. And uh, you can see here the free world the universe of uh, free knowledge, um, uh, the really free world, so to speak, maybe. And um, yeah, so within that frame of having different projects, developers, uh, foundations, editors, readers, learners, we think that there needs to be also a similar kind of um, trajectory for hardware. And um, yeah, so we, th we thought, uh, let's contribute to this also for free technical knowledge. So open hardware, and um, yeah, um, actually, that's quite natural if you think about the fact that thousands of hardware projects obviously are created to serve under technology demand worldwide. Um, and then there are only a few people knowing this. Uh, so that's pretty much all to, um, to go into that a little bit. Um, the the um, yeah, starting point uh, for us. So we see that um, this. Thousands of DIY and open hardware projects worldwide, they, they offer lots of different solutions for sustainable development. And actually, they can help create small and medium enterprises and startups. That's also an important factor. And of course, they are developed by individuals, by companies, and especially um, communities. Um, and uh, we have different solutions in different domains. And um, that also means that if we want to change industry and if we want to change something uh, in real terms uh, to create products, um, um, then like we've just seen um, in the previous talk, um, uh, then, then we need companies. And um, yeah, this is actually um, where we started some time ago. And uh, I would like to go and go step by step about the different things we did. So we started. Um, with different prototypes, to be honest, which I will just show you, and I will show you each time a little bit where we got and where we start. So first of all, we created a search engine, um, and um, this search engine actually was uh, jointly created between the Open Source Ecology Germany and uh, yeah, the TU Berlin team uh, here. Um, Dietrich Jäger was at the time from Open Source Ecology Germany, and that's also how I got to know uh, Martin Hoyer at the time. Um, and then um, 
we actually had an idea. So using developers can find open hardware projects faster and easier, and new projects can build on the experiences of already realized products. Project. So this is some time ago now, uh, and it's not so such a, a revolutionary idea maybe today, you know, it still is, uh, but not to you, um, who are more versed uh, here in this uh, summit. Uh, 12,000 uh, project results were crawled in, in 500 technology categories uh, on, on, on Uber, and uh, yeah, so we crawled on Google, YouTube, etc. Uh, to be very honest, um, it was a lot of uh, work uh, from uh, Dietrich Jäger at the time, who had a company here in Germany that was, uh, uh, or still has, that is uh, well versed in search engines. Now, the search still exists, um, and um, just to say quickly, it crawls the web, of course, uh, it categorizes uh, the search results and then stores it in a database and, and it makes it uh, accessible to a search interface for you. Um, then, um, let's say um, around the same time, we also um, created the open meter and um, so the, the OMO provided uh, for the, um, uh, yeah, as part of the um, yeah, OMO project directory, um, a solution uh, to verify the open meter at the time. So at the Berlin, a colleague of mine, Jeremy Bonnezon, and, and, and myself, uh, we created this idea of the open meter to say how open is hardware. And uh, yeah, the OVO was at the time for us, you see it here on the right, um, the database where we uh, yeah, uh, um, kept our results that you can still see today. And there we have created 219 rated projects with descriptions and links to browsing, which some of them are not yeah, up to date. Um, uh, and then um, today, of course, anymore. <laughs> um, then, um, yeah, um, I don't want to go too much in the past, I want to go in the future now. Um, uh, because, uh, but this is important because from the um, idea of uh, rating projects and, and looking at projects and the open meter um, stemmed this idea um, that, that was heavily pushed by Martin Hoyer at the time um, of making the Dean Spec 3105 initiative. And um, so this was to define a bit more uh, based on the OSHRA definition and uh, uh, um, open hardware and also make an attestation um, procedure of open hardware. Um, but the state in this case means really to check documentation and also the licenses. Um, in, yeah, the year after we started this, uh, we created OVO, um, the OVO certification platform, we called it, but it's, um, it's not really um, the same as, of course, the OSHA certification, it's, it's a bit different. It's, it's for uh, open reviews or peer-to-peer -peer reviews, and it, it follows the definition um, of Oshawa uh, indirectly, um, it, it actually um, yeah, uh, allows to assess hardware according to the Steam Spec 3105 and was basically the, the, the instance to put that into action at the time. Um, and yeah, so we created a workflow for that and you can see on the side a little bit how it works. You, you upload your bill of materials and your um, documentation and then you can uh, review it with different reviewers. Um, I say a bit more in the next slide about the, pro, uh, the, the workflow. Um, and um, yeah, so in, in the end, in 1st of April, we decided, okay, we've been doing uh, some prototypes now, let's found OVO. Um, and uh, yeah, um, let's say by then, the, really, the results were also involved closely in the v 105 so that's also the like part of that, so it was the first open access technical specification by Boyd Publishing at the time, or the DNF, which also sponsored this effort. And also it was, um, yeah, at the, by the end of last year, the case that we internally also tested this reviewing peer-to-peer -peer procedure or workflow um, with more than 100 fully documented open hardware test projects, which were realized um, and, and, uh, on the page. You can see it when you go there. And also uh, we realized in the background um, a GitLab that project management workflow which makes the whole process quite fast for us. Um, so um, to, to say uh, a little bit more about this, um, but not too much um, for timekeeping. So the OVO team then together with, with the wider network, of course, that we were part of only, developed the appropriate standards for open hardware. Then uh, the, the idea was that the community comes and selects the, the excellent projects and um, then reviewers and then the reviewers example the project and then there's a way to appreciate that the release really is uh, replicable, complete, you know, and also has a license that allows for everyone to use it. 
Um, as a little group to this also, um, eventually we decided that we also should uh, use this to improve projects, of course, and, and also maybe in an active way to bring in um, experienced engineers and, and create blueprints and path lists, like I said to show you um, in the previous slides that we, we also did our own projects just to try this out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this, this could uh, also be expanded upon in the future. So we call this the CUT um, Center. Um, and then uh, finally, uh, the last activity I want to mention to you is the OSA data. Uh, you may know it um, if you've been following the OSA activities. Uh, in mid 2021, the OSA data initiative, or also blog in particular, was handed over to uh, our team by um, Harris Kenny. Um, and yeah, so uh, just a few words about OSA data as well. What does it do? It studies brands, markets, and products and people who make open hardware work and shares its findings via a blog and newsletter. So, um, yeah, you can check our recent uh, blog post, which we will uh, also uh, share with our newsletter on Monday. Um, and, um, yeah, um, uh, this is uh, um, some work that uh, has been coming out of the Open Next Consortium uh, by, by the team led by Martin Hoyer also. Um, so we've been working in different capacities together. I mentioned this name quite a bit now, I noticed. Uh, but, yeah, so the next steps will be to continue reviving the OSH status annual state of Open Hardware Report later this year. Mm. Yeah, after there was a bit of a pause last year due to the handover and reorganization. Um, yeah, so if we can share uh, something, um, a post from you or that, yeah, your organization that, that could be interesting for the same audience here, please contact us. Um, just to uh, maybe reflect on this a little bit, I didn't write this all down, but um, I think uh, it's very good. Um, the, the previous talks, uh, they, they showed the difficulties with hardware, mechanical hardware. Um, and I think uh, there is a great sense of uh, also uh, change in the field, so uh, in, a, in a great sense. That, that also was mentioned by uh, the talk previously uh, by Jake Reed. So um, when, when engineers design open source modules, uh, reviews uh, would be very important. Um, in the future also in for mechanic hardware. And uh, yeah, we hope that eventually we can provide some really good solutions. And yeah, so um, a bit like in that talk as well, uh, we are also working here with prototypes, I would say at this point. Um, we would like to demonstrate this more. Uh, so uh, eventually we, we do want to create some revenue streams and we want to acquire a lot of of expert reviewers um, and we want to advance these existing off offerings now for specific target groups. So this could go in different directions, science, businesses, citizens, DIY, or also especially yeah, um, a global south initiatives. Uh, I think uh, today was really good also to see the diversity of, of hardware. Um, otherwise, um, on an operational level, um, of course, uh, we would like to expand uh, on our resources, in particular in sustainable development in Global South. Um, but also, yeah, we've, we've looked into open agricultural technologies recently. Uh, open science indicators is a topic that we're very interested in. And also, DIY or open lab equipment design evaluation and sharing is something that interests us. So, I will close my talk here, and maybe with just a few. Yeah, pointer. So, so we would uh, be really um, interested in the in the near future to work on European research and innovation actions, also or innovation actions, more so uh, with Uru. We want to uh, also um, get ideas. That's why we're here today. So, if you have some good idea on right to repair or market research or you name it, you know you would like to connect with us um, where you see our resources useful. Please do so, and also, um, yeah, if you would like to certify your documentation release, um, yeah, please contact us. Uh, maybe able to, we may be able to help you improve it. Uh, but if you don't, also tell us why. Um, and then also, the, um, yeah, like I said, you can contact us if you want to make a blog post. That's it from me. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Uh, this is a really awesome project, a really great initiative, understanding how um, yeah, different parts of things make up the ecosystem for open hardware. I have one question that I have is um, with respect to reviewing, you know, for reviewing, how do you ensure that we're reviewing both best practices and that we're enabling um, 
and the values of the community to come through. I think reviewing for engineering is one aspect of that, but there are also other ways in which technology can be appropriate or inappropriate. Um, I was wondering if you thought about that at all. Yeah, could you repeat the main question uh, again? Just uh, how do you make sure reviewers are not are, are, are being generative and not just like exclusionary? All right. Yeah, that's that's a good question. So so reviewing is a difficult process. And let's say we've more looked into the technicalities of it so far. And, and you're right. In, in practice, there are many things to consider. So we would like to, to understand also better how this workflow um, does yeah, turn out in practice. Um, and, and I guess the honest answer is uh, that we have been using it ourselves so far mostly. So we would also need the practical exposure a little more. Yeah. Yeah, there have been studies in the past that uh, for uh, community reviewing for projects like Wikipedia that um, as time goes on, the projects can become more and more hegemonies where they are controlled by only a few, um, only a few moderators. But lots of cool stuff to dig into. There's lots of people who I think want to talk to you in the chat, um, so maybe you can hop on there if you have a second. 